statue. I mean, killing Moses is a pretty big deal, historically speaking. Whoa, hold up! Whoa, 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 whatever you do, for the love of God, don't ever let that blade touch your skin. I mean, what do you think you're doing bringing that here? Well, okay, yes, 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 this is your house, so I guess you can do whatever the fuck you want. But remember, I'm here to help you figure if what you want to do is actually something you don't want to do. Trust me when I say, using that knife falls into the latter category. That's a Ferba, which on its own is dangerous enough to a guy like you. A Ferba's blade will pin a demon to the spot. Once that's done, only the person who shanked the demon can free it. Now, it is possible that a normal Ferba wouldn't be strong enough to bind you. But this is the Trinity. Its blade was forged from the three nails that crucified Christ. Not normal! Extremely not normal! If you'd cut yourself with the Trinity, you would have been paralyzed. The only person who could have set you free would have been you, which you wouldn't be able to do because you would be paralyzed. Do you see the paradox here? Come to think of it, you ever decide to touch this stuff, just, just, just ask first. All right, nothing big, just a simple, hey, Johnny, is it okay if I touch this? And I'll say, sure, Jackie. That absolutely will not trap you in a never-ending loop of torment. Or I'll say the other thing. You know, no! This one's a little tricky. You know the story of Noah and the Great Flood, right? Mm? Okay, humanity grows wicked, God floods the planet, family survives on floating zoo, classic Sunday school. Well, here's what really happened. As you know, the darkness feeds on human suffering. Well, let me tell you. If you think life sucks today, imagine how bad it was back then, before indoor plumbing. The, the darkness was at an all-you-can-eat smorgasbord of pain, and every meal was making it stronger. Seeing as the Angelus was indisposed at the time, God decided to step in with one of his great ideas. Noah built the ark, God floods the earth. 99.9% .9 of mankind dies a horrible death. The darkness is destroyed. Huzzah! But... Did that happen? No, sir! Guess who was waiting once the world has dried off? That's right. Needless to say, the Almighty had a little egg on his face. According to legend, God breathed his remorse into the first seat shell that Noah found once he left the ark. That shell became known as Yahweh's Lament. I know, it's a different spelling. It's missing some letters. Place it to your ear and you will hear the voice of God. That said, only the truly mad or the nearly dead can fathom God's almighty words. Which is kind of scary seeing as how I think I can hear something whispering to me right now. Okay, okay, not going to think about that right now. Anyway, that's the deal with this thing. It's either Yahweh's lament or it's a seashell. The world may never know. You go about your day. I'll find out what I can. Alright, had the volume off. Um, got a lot of people living around the house. But as of late, uh, I've been just trying to see all the relics and everything else. It's This is, well, it's a thumb screw. I don't really know what else to tell you. I mean, this thing is definitely giving off dark energy. But again, we're talking about a device that was used to torture people by slowly crushing their fingers. Yeah, I'd be scared if it wasn't fingers. giving off nasty vibes. What? You want, you want more? Uh, sure. Just give me a second. Um, uh, 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 oh, oh, okay, I got something. I got something. Uh, from what I can divine, this thing goes back like 400 years. It was used on a host who was imprisoned by the Brotherhood. Chances are that dark energy I'm picking up is a taint left by the darkness. Meaning this isn't just any thumbscrew, it's an evil thumbscrew, so it hurts more. Maybe. Oh, that's still not enough. Okay, fine, fine, fine. This is the infamous Black Thumb. In 1631, it single-handedly ripped and raped its way across the English countryside, leaving behind a trail of bloody bastards and broken dreams. Never has the world seen such carnage. Pray it never will again. Yes, I am being sarcastic. No, I don't want you to kill me. Okay, I'll shut up now. Think back to your high school history class. Wait, did you even go to high school? You know what? Forget it. I don't want to argue, nor do I want you to punch me in the face. So, I'll just catch you up to speed on some stuff I'm sure you already know. The lost colony of Roanoke was a British colony off the coast of what we now call North Carolina. As the name implies, it disappeared. Okay, the colony, not the island. 115 people just whoosh, gone. Okay, goodbye. To this day, no one knows what happened to them. Well, no one except for me and every other supernatural junkie on the planet. See, the darkness was first carried to North America by one of the colonists. And where the darkness goes, its enemies follow. One of those enemies, the Angelus, came to a nearby tribe of Croatoan natives. Influenced by the Angelus, a Croatoan maid slipped into the colony under cloak of night and massacred the colonists in their sleep. 
This is the weapon she used, Roanoke's Bane. But the Angelus had been mistaken. The darkness was not in Roanoke, as it was being carried by the colony's leader, John White. John was back in England, procuring more supplies. When he returned to find Roanoke deserted, the darkness through the Angelus had been there. Unfortunately for the Croatoans, the Angelus had already moved on. They were defenseless when the darkness fell upon them, much like the colonists had been. Fair's fair, I suppose. I'll be right here. My nose in a book. Good. Oh. Hey, good to see you back on your feet, boss. Someone's gonna pay out their ass for this, Jackie. You just point the way. Hmm. The exact pitch has never been identified, but when struck, the chime emits a sound that can physically push back the night. Now, if you want, we can test the chime's authenticity. We just gotta hit it, you know, make it sing. But, and this is a much larger butt. A butt of epic proportions, really. It might disintegrate you. Just saying. Oh, wow. You seriously have a copy of The True Revelation? I'm impressed, Jackie. Didn't Peggy as the reading type. To call this book rare would be laughable. Magic swords, true love, stake. These things are rare. The True Revelation is one of a kind. I'm not exaggerating. Every copy is completely different. See, The True Revelation is actually The Revelation of John, the Bible's explosive summer blockbustering finale. There are three schools of thought about The Revelation. The first believes it is a literal prophecy. This is retarded. The second believes it's a metaphor for Roman persecution. Plausible, but boring. The third believes it is a code that, once deciphered, will reveal the true revelation. People who believe this tend to be insane, but also extremely fun at parties. Now, everyone deciphers the revelation differently, which is why each copy is entirely unique. Just flipping through this one, it, it, it appears to have been deciphered by the Brotherhood. In fact, it predicts the Brotherhood's descent into crazy town. That means this is a relatively true revelation. See, we can prove the Brotherhood went crazy, but we can't prove what the revelation predicted. Chances are, the man who wrote this copy only saw what he wanted to see inside the revelation. Or he was insane and just poured his depravity onto the page. Like they say, write what you know. Either way, this translation has probably guided the Brotherhood's actions for at least a century. Kind of like the normal Bible still does today, hmm? Almost makes you wonder who's crazier. I, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed. I've waited years to see one of these. Seven years, if we're being honest. And it is not living up to my expectations. You gotta understand, only 12 of these masks were ever made. This is probably the only one still in existence. That's already enough to mark this thing as priceless. But it doesn't stop there. No, sir. These masks were forged by a group of monks known as the Brothers of Men. And we're not talking about run-of-the-mill pacifist monks. The Brothers of Men were hardcore, ass-kicking warrior priests. It was in China, after the fall of the Han Dynasty. The darkness was living in Shu Han, feeding off the War of the Three Kingdoms. Legend suggests that the Angelus appeared to the monks, warning them of the darkness. It doesn't say why the Angelus didn't fight the darkness herself, but it doesn't matter, because the monks, they handled themselves just fine. The monks single-handedly defeated the darkness, using nothing but their fists and these masks. It's said that if a mask caught even the smallest light from the dimmest candle, it would be reflected back 100-fold. The monks were basically walking sunbeams, which sounds goofy when I say it like that, but still. I'm just disappointed to see its magic is long gone. And killed to see it in action. Well, not kill, since I guess I'd have to use it on you, and that would be just... awkward. You know... The darkness didn't come from the cradle of civilization. The darkness came from nowhere. Which, if you follow the Rothfusian or Rothfushian, I say Rothfushian, okay? Theory, it means the darkness also comes from everywhere. Numerous cultures throughout history make reference to the darkness, even though most of them had never encountered it. For example, take a look at this Aztec totem. An anthropologist would identify it as the key of Mictlan. Mictlan, of course, being the Aztec underworld. This is wrong on an absurd number of levels. Mictlan was a battleground that fed on the souls of the dead. Man, woman, child, didn't matter. They went on to their death prepared to fight, knowing that Mictlan awaited 
persuaded them. Sound familiar to you? It should. It's the darkness. This is just one example out of thousands. Every person since the dawn of time has known instinctually the darkness was waiting. It's why so many of us have a natural fear of the dark. To me, that says something, and I don't think you're going to like it. Part of me believes the darkness is inside all of us. Just a small bit of essence. It's a part of us. Maybe the darkness came from us. Maybe it's an extension of who we are. I don't know. But I do know that if any of those crazy ideas are even partly true, then the darkness isn't going anywhere, no matter what we do. Hmm. I wonder what's on TV tonight. Huh? <clears throat> See this sexy guy right here? This is the Dark Man. As you can tell by the cute little demon heads on either side, the Dark Man was one of your predecessors. <clears throat> In fact, he's the first Darkness host we have any record of. We know there have been hosts before him, but none of them got statues, so fuck them. You know? <laughs> no one knows who the Dark Man was, or where he came from. All we have to go on is one passage from the Hidden Testament of Moses. If I can paraphrase, it says, He walked out of the wilderness, a Dark Man who spoke with authority. You know, like James Earl Jones. And, and, and those words were black, even the wisest were swayed. Q, 40 years of horror unlike anything the world had ever seen. Oh yeah, you heard that correctly. 40 fucking years. Moses wasn't lost in the desert for four decades. He was fighting a war against Mr. Tall, Dark, and Stretchy. Seriously, I mean, what's up with this guy's neck? He's like a... Reality. You get a lot of bad dreams when your serotonin's out of whack. It makes you think you're remembering things that never happened. But my family, my, my friends... The darkness. Jackie, none of this is real. I'll work out a schedule with Dr. Vic. Play your cards right, and we can see a lot of each other, okay? Jackie, you okay? My schedule? What? Jenny, you don't understand. You're in real trouble. We both are. We're getting out of here. Now! Jackie, whoa, no! Whoa, big guy. Code white! <clears throat> Easy, Jackie. Let go oh, of me! God. Come on! You were doing ah, so good. Right, here we go. Good. Easy, easy. Calm down, Jackie. We're not gonna hurt you. Keep him still. Geronimo! Johnny, cut it out! Go Johnny, what the hell are you doing? Sleep. Get him off, would you please? Run, Jackie! <laughs> Get Power back here, people. Jackie! Head for the bunker! Tell Eva I will be late! He must have ate some prunes. He's running for the door! Jackie, get back here! Oi, this way. There's nothing out there for you! See, as long as the bloodline continues, the darkness will always have a new host. Found that out my fifth birthday. Woke up in the middle of the night with my dad, just sitting on my bed, hovering over me. Butcher knife in his hand. <sighs> Still not really sure if the crazy fuck was thinking of putting me out of my misery, or making sure no one else would take his place. Make it stop, Jackie. Jackie, Jesus. I can't believe it, you're back. You said the darkness won't let you die, but I, I never believed you. It took it four days to repair you after you got shot in the face. I'm losing my fucking mind. Look, Jackie, I don't, uh, know how to tell you this, but, uh, they arranged the funeral for your Aunt Sarah today. God damn it. God damn it. It's my fault. It's my fault they killed her. It was that prick Bragg. After he shot you, your Aunt Sarah, he, uh, uh Jackie, uh, I'm so sorry. Jesus. It's all going to shit. Your boys beat the Brotherhood back. Chased them out of here. But you know that wasn't the last of them, right? We can't let the Brotherhood take the darkness, Jackie. That's not gonna happen. The darkness. The darkness has Jenny's soul. And it wants these Brotherhood jackoffs dead and the siphon for itself. If I don't play ball, it says it'll keep her forever. Jackie, that siphon in the darkness's hands is not good. It's too powerful. With the siphon, it could overwhelm you. Take control completely. I don't have a choice. I won't let it hurt Jenny. Jackie, let's uh, let's take a step back here, okay? Let's let's think about this. So, what if what if, uh, what if she isn't even real? Mm? The darkness plays tricks on you, huh? It makes you see things. No, it's her. I know it. I feel it. So, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna go to my aunt Sarah's funeral. Then I'm gonna go kill a lot of people. 
Be careful, Jackie. The Brotherhood will stop at nothing to get the darkness. Nothing! Okay, I'm looking at this, and what I'm seeing is the Chime of Deliverance. But, and mind you, this is a small but. All records of the Chime say it was destroyed along with Solomon's Temple back in 586 BC. That said, records have been wrong in the past, so who knows? Maybe it's the real thing. The Chime first dates back to the Forty Year War, that period of time when Moses and the Israelites fought the darkness in the wilderness. The Chime wasn't designed to be a weapon. Instead, it was an instrument of safe passage. According to the secret histories, the Chime was carried ahead of Moses' army and struck every 153 steps. Now, any army in history would tell you that ringing a bell nonstop is a bad idea. That's how your enemy finds you. Thing is, the darkness is no ordinary enemy, and the Chime is no ordinary bell. You're in the mob. The mob is Italian. Italian's like opera, right? Well, you know how an opera singer can shatter glass by singing a certain note? Well, the Chime of Deliverance does the same thing. Except instead of glass, it shatters darkness.